Hey everyone, my name is David and in this video I'm going to teach you how to make an advanced customizable trading journal inside of Notion. So to start off, we're first going to go ahead and make a new page and we're just going to go ahead and title this trading journal. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and hit our enter button and we need a table. So in order to make a table, we're going to go down here and we're going to go to table view. We're going to go ahead and name this the trading journal and then for the name there's a couple ways you can do this, but I'm gonna make the name the ticker symbol. Next up, this tag field that's right here by default, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this. And instead of being a multi-select, we're gonna make it a number. And we'll keep it in standard number format. And we'll move it to a US dollar format. And instead of being titled tags, we're gonna call it our gross entry. And when we go to enter things into this field, we're gonna enter our trades by the gross volume. So if the trade was $100 a share and we took 10 shares, that's a $1,000 gross entry. That's what our field entry here is gonna be. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and make a new one and we're gonna make it a number as well. And we are going to change it to the US dollar and we're going to call it our gross exit. And by default, both of these fields are gonna have a number sign here. I'm gonna go ahead and change this from a number sign over to a arrow pointing right for the entry. And then for the exit, I'm going to make it an X. So that'll be the price that we sell our position for. This will be the price that we open our position for. Next up, we're gonna make a new field. And in this one, we're actually gonna use a formula. And we're gonna go ahead and change this to a P slash L for our profit and loss. And for the actual formula, what we're gonna do is gonna be our gross exit minus our gross entry. And we'll click done. Now we'll see if we open a position for $100 and we sell it for $120, we have a profit of $20 displayed in our PL tab. But let's go ahead and empty out those trades. Our next field is just gonna be the date field. Now the next field is gonna be a notes field. Now we do have one more column to add here, but before we can do it, we need to go ahead and make a new page. So we're gonna make a new page and we're gonna call this our trading summary. And you guessed it, we're gonna go ahead and type our backslash and we're gonna do another table view database. And we're gonna name this our trading summary. And then we will kind of make the same system here. We're gonna call this the ticker, but this time we're gonna go ahead and change the tags property and we are going to make it a relation. And it's gonna ask us what we wanna relate it to. We're gonna relate it back to our trading journal. We're gonna make sure this is set to no limit and we are gonna select show on trade journal. Once we click add relation, we're gonna rename this tag field to the ticker link and it should be good to go. Now, if we close out of our trading summary and go back over to our trade journal, we're gonna have our trading summary here. But before we touch this trading summary table, we're gonna go back over to our trade summary and let's say we trade uh, TQQQ and SQQ a lot and uh, maybe we trade uh, Gush. I don't even think Gush is a uh, ETF anymore, but um, let's say these are you know the three tickers that we trade an awful lot. Or, you know, we could even go ahead and add NVIDIA, some of the high flyers here recently. We'll add NVIDIA and maybe Meta. And maybe we'll do uh, Amazon. Let's say these are, you know, the primary trades that we take. These are the tickers we often find ourselves using. Now we're going to go back to our trade journal. And because this is on TQQQ, when we go over to our trading summary, we're going to select to link this to the TQQQ page. So when we put this trade in, we're gonna link it to the TQQ page. And now when we go to our trade summary, it's gonna be linked here. And if we go back to our trade journal, let's say we had another page and this one was a loss. Uh, we bought in for $110 and we sold out for $95. We got a gross profit of negative $15. We're gonna make sure that we link this to TQQQ because that's the ticker we're trading. Now, if we go to our summary page, we're gonna have our TQQQ twice. We're gonna have both pages. And one thing we wanna do here is go ahead and go to our settings. We're gonna make sure wrap in view is turned off right now, just so that if we were to go and add you know, five more 
Uh, we don't have this wrapping and kind of extending our TQQQ all the way down forever. But what I like to do is actually just hide this ticker link once we get done. But at this point, now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say our total P slash L and we'll add this property here. And instead of this being a text property, this is actually going to be what's called a roll up. So we're gonna use roll up and then our relation is gonna go back to the ticker link, but we're not gonna choose the ticker property for the link. We're actually going to use the PNL. And there's a couple things we could do here. Uh, you can make a bar for example, or you could make a ring. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to kind of show both and there's only a way to divide it out by 100. So typically I just like to leave it as a number. But if you look right now, we're counting. So there's 20 and there's negative 15. That's the summary of these two pages. That's not really what we wanna do. So we're gonna to go to calculate and we're gonna go down to more options and we're gonna select sum. Once we do that, we're gonna see that those two trades totaled up to a positive of $5. And let's say we took a trade on Amazon for $100 and we sold it for $175, netting us a profit of $75. And we'll go ahead and link this to the Amazon page. Now when we go to our trade summary, we'll see we have Amazon here and $75 profit. Now another cool thing we can do on our trade summary tab is actually go down here to these bottoms. There's actually these calculate buttons. We can go ahead and click calculate, more options, sum, and that'll give us our total PL for this time period. So if this was our trading journal for the month of July, uh, that would be our sum for the month of July if this was all of our trades. And we can go right here, we can go ahead and click count, and instead of counting all, we're gonna count values. We count values, it's gonna have three, and that's gonna be our three trades that we've taken thus far. But when we go to our trade summary, I actually find uh, the trade link here to be kind of annoying. Uh, I like to keep this pretty clean, so uh, what we can actually do is just go ahead and hide in view. And this table right here will still work. That page will still function in the background without being visible. If we ever wanna make it visible, we can always click right here and move this up, and there it is. And next up, if you look here on the left side, we have our trading journal. And then inside that, we have the actual table for that trading journal. But I wanna go ahead and put our trading summary inside of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag it up right here where it's nested. And now if we look, these are both have their own dependent tables, but all of this is dependent on the trading journal tab and can be quickly uh, collapsed. And you can go ahead and add a lot of your other items up here. It doesn't take up your entire notion uh, to have your little trade journal here but we've still got our calendar to make. So now that we've got these nested under each other, we can go right here and click the plus sign on the trading journal. And instead of using a table, we can go down here and we can just select a calendar. And this part is pretty simple. All we have to do is link it to our trading journal database. If you look, there's nothing here. Why is there nothing here? Because earlier we didn't put any dates in. So uh, today is Saturday the 27th. Let's say this trade happened on the 25th and this trade happened on the 26th and let's say this trade happened on the 26th now if we go down to our view of trading we can see tqqq tqqq amazon that's what we traded but i don't like the look of this i mean all it tells me is what i traded it's not telling me you know, what my pnl was if we want to change that we can go up here click edit and then properties we've only got the ticker showing so instead of having the ticker showing we can go ahead and add the PL. So now we know we made $20 on Thursday in TQQQ. We lost 15 in TQQQ on Friday, but we made 75 on Friday at Amazon. If you guys don't take a lot of uh, trades, you can also move your notes tab up here and you could have your notes here. If you guys trade in multiple different asset classes, you can use tags within your trading journal and then those will pop up in this list. So instead of notes, you could actually have tags. Maybe, hey, this was a crypto trade hey, this was a equities trade, this was a futures options trade, whatever it may be. But you guys can see how much customization there is here to adopt to your specific trading style. I'd say the one aspect of trading that this probably wouldn't work really well on is if you are a scalper with very, very high volume trading. If you do that, obviously you could see how, you know, the calendar could very quickly get uh, pretty crowded, especially, you know, I know people who take you know, 100 trades a day that's not going to be realistic to, to journal this so that's how you can make a trading journal inside of notion that at times can be a little bit more adaptable than you might see from trader sync or trader view 
if you guys have any cool things out there that you make inside of notion or any suggestions you might have in terms of improving a trading journal be sure to leave them in the comments below if you guys did enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys next time